That guy's Lars Fredrickson. I'm Dennis Farrell. This is a Wrestling Perspective podcast. We are blowing through the questions today, Lars. We have a lot going on. We have the Bullet Club, Impact Tag Team Champions, Ace Austin, Chris Bay. Chris, the second time on the show. We cannot wait, but we cut the email short last week. Let's hit up as many as we can. Samuel from St. Louis. Why on earth would WWE let John Cena walk right back into Raw, destroy Ace Austin on the mic, on the mic during a promo? Isn't the point of an aging superstar coming back to help put over younger talent? Yeah, exactly. And it was honestly, it's not like John Cena needs to be, uh, needs to put over himself. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, you you, you got an opportunity with Austin. And, uh, you know, who's, I feel like the best talent that they've had in a very, very long time. I, I, you know, I don't know if, uh, that was the right move. Although John Cena, that's not really the first time he's done it. I mean, he did that with Roman Reigns, uh, you know, so, and these guys obviously, you know, became something, you know, I hope Austin, you know, doesn't do any Mountain Dew fucking matches anytime, but like. Other than that, uh, yeah, I thought it was a, a, just a bad look. Like John Cena, just you know what, go be an actor. You know what I mean? I just don't understand what the point of that was, honestly. And I really, honestly, didn't have that much of a problem of the promo up until he made the dick joke at the very end, where I kind of felt like, come on, I, I would have been a lot more happier with that promo if. Austin Theory had the last words and walked out. It would have made the match a little bit more compelling because we we know John Cena. We know his moves. We know his mic skills. He's got talent. Sure, great. Ace is an up-and-comer. Going into WrestleMania, I feel like Ace being the champion should have no, been Austin, Austin. Austin. Austin being – I got Ace on my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Austin well, coming in. Austin. <laughs> yeah. But Austin coming in being the uh, – I did it again. Ace, either way, him coming in, being the champion, he should come in with the more heat, the the more flash being on the show every week. I just didn't appreciate Cena coming no. and getting the last words. Yeah, I, I honestly, I thought it was something that was just – I was just kind of, I literally was shaking my head the whole time going, what is going on? Liam from Essex, listening across the pond. As a wrestling fan, where do you draw the line for interactions between fans and wrestlers and now wrestlers and fans with M- MJF's uh, actions during Revolution throwing water on the child? <laughs> it's an interesting question, though. Oh, you know what? I love that shit. I'm sorry. I do. I love it. I, I, oh, from a, I, from a fan watching standpoint, I thought it was great. From uh, setting a precedent, I'm a little bit nervous now because does this mean you're going to see more fans throw water or throw things at, at, at wrestlers thinking it's okay? Because, people, listen, let's be honest, and I love our listeners. Fans at independent shows are idiots. Let's be honest with ourselves. They do. Well, the no, but, but, but they do. And I've seen video of fans doing really dumb shit on indie shows and dudes just laying them out. But I mean, how do we even know that that wasn't even a plan? I, I don't know. I'm I'm operating like it's not, but you, you I don't want to know either. But, uh, yeah. but let's say it's I'll not. tell you what, if some wrestler threw water on me and he didn't say anything to me about it, um, I would be legitimately probably upset, uh, but I don't know. It was kind of funny. I mean, it because it, it wasn't just, us. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, but also I think just the fact that like here's this guy. I mean, you got to give credit to MJF where credit is due. It's like he believes that he he kayfabes it, man. I mean, if there's if there's one real thing in wrestling right now, you know, I would say that he is it. In a lot of ways. I mean, there's obviously many others, but you know what I'm saying? Like when you think about somebody who really lives that gimmick, it's him. All right. The, we got a couple, Matt, Alex, Jake, and several others have sent emails over the past few weeks that I haven't quite got to because the last couple of sessions we had to cut short. Uh, but the gist of it is, please tell us a story about the Intercontinental Championship belt behind you, Lars. Is it a oh. replica? Did someone give it to you? Is it CM Punk's? 
No, so this is the Ultimate Warriors, the the IC belt that the Ultimate Warrior had. As you can see, the Warrior figures are above it. Um, and it's something that I went to a belt maker, like a like a legit um, wrestling belt maker. Um, I I can't believe I can't, the name escapes me now. But um, so I he the stuff that he was I found him on on Instagram and and I saw a lot of the stuff that he was making and. I had some some action figures that he wanted, so it was like part trade, part cash, um, that I got it. So it's like I said, I always wanted the the yellow, but it's real. It's like got the, it's the WWF one. It's not it's not a uh, here. Hold on a second. I'm gonna get it out. All right. As Lars gets up. Oh right. wow. It's got the WWF logo. And okay. This thing is a brick. You know, this thing weighs about 15 pounds. So and it's genuine leather. It's got the, the old school, um, you know, it's the basically a replica of what the original once was. So there you have it. I hope that uh, answered your question. You I hope you enjoyed. Because that's, you why else would you have that thing with, without showing it off? I didn't hear you because I had my headphones on. I, I will say this from the back in the, you know, from the camera, it looked like it was the white strap. And I thought, oh, oh that's cool. So when you brought it forward and it, it was that yellow, that's sexy. No, but that's the Warriors, man. Yeah. They, they, you're catching the glare. But yeah, I've had it now for a few years. So look at even the back here. This is rad. You know, WWF Intercontinental. It was we, cool. It's such a cool belt. We have a second. Let me ask you this, because I gave Petey some shit about this over the weekend. The Velcro on the back of championship mat belts now, how tacky is that? You were a billion-dollar company, and I get sometimes it's hard to you know snap, but you're a professional. You know, Let's not yeah. do the Velcro. The Velcro looks tacky. Yeah, I don't like the Velcro. All right. Well, listen, guys, uh, thank you so much for the emails, wrestlingperspective at gmail.com. Feel free to email us any questions you have, your hot takes, whatever you want. We will uh, at least read them. We'll get them on the air as fast as we can. Uh, thank you so much, by the way, to Fightful for hosting us. If you're watching on Fightful, go to our social media stuff and follow us. We have some great past Lars Fredrickson, myself, uh, Wrestling Perspective. Uh, where, our YouTube page where you can catch a bunch of past interviews we did that you can't find on Fightful. So go over there, throw us a subscription, a, a like, a click. What do they say on smash that subscribe button? Well, you know what? Here's the thing. I'm, I, I want to give away a few issues of uh, some Pro Wrestling Illustrateds. So oh. maybe we can do like a little contest. So maybe like we can do the question of the week. I like so that. we'll have the future, and then maybe in the future, you're going to get something from Lars's personal wrestling collection. So, how about this? How about, and that can range from anything from whatever, maybe a Bret Hart NWO card, Ooh. right? Or it could be, let's see here. I well, that's all I really want to get away. I can't. But maybe wait. we do something like that. I can't wait from Dennis from Michigan to win something. He emails every week. Oh, guys, he's a yeah. pain in my ass, though. Uh, all right, and you know what? How about this Undertaker mask? Hold on. You can give away this Undertaker mask. Oh, Maybe my God. Do the, can do you the do show the whole interview with that thing on? Hang on. <laughs> hey, listen. Here we go. It even matches my sweatsuit. Will you, will you take us out into the Bullet Club interview with a little rest in peace? Uh, just want me to say rest in peace? Do it. Do your best. Rest in peace. You got the mask on. You might as well take us out as the Undertaker. Rest in peace. God, I love it. All right, guys. Bullet Club coming right up. We'll see you in a second. Lars Fredrickson, this podcast just got a little too sweet, my friend. I am super excited. We have the Impact Tag Team Champions Bullet Club members Ace Austin, Chris Bay. Chris, this is your second time on the podcast. Look at that showing out right there. <laughs> yeah, man. Big flexor. Oh, wow. First of all, thank you guys so much for making a, a time out of your Bullet Club schedule to come sit with us. I'm sure you're busy doing Bullet Club stuff. Do you guys like have Bullet Club meetings? Do you guys, you know, how's that work? 
like it, it's a little hard to do that when we're all so uh, spread out amongst the industry. Uh, I don't know. We don't have we have annual meetings, but not regular meetings. <laughs> yeah, we got to set up Zoom calls like this to get all of us since we're all spread all the way around in different yeah. time zones. Though sometimes it's the middle of the night, sometimes it's the top of the morning. You never know. Well. I, I want to start this out with, Chris, I was there when you joined the Bullet Club, which was a huge pop moment during that pay-per-view. Uh, super excited, super crazy. But you were one of the major factors of bringing New Japan and Impact together. How important was that for you to bring these two companies together? Did you, when you, was that in your mind that you were going to try to bring these guys together? How did that come about? Yeah, so, um, you know, joining Bullet Club, I realized that there was now this opportunity for me to be this uh, rebuilding bridge with Impact and New Japan to help rebuild their their working relationship. So I understood how important it was for me to just knock it out of the park so that not only myself and other Bullet Club members could eat, you know, sell more Bullet Club merch across brands, but also so more Impact talent could also do the same and New Japan talent could come across the Impact. And I knew that uh, it was a huge responsibility on my shoulders, but also know that, you know, uh, I'm a pressure player. So when the pressure's on, that's when I thrive the hardest. So I knew it was going to be a great opportunity for me to earn some trust within my company, earn some trust with New Japan and uh, help all of us, uh, you know, get on a, a better working relationship. Well, you know, both of you guys are very accomplished singles competitors. I mean, you know, the history will show that you guys are just talented individuals coming together to make this tag team um, at this point now draped with the, you know, Impact World Tag Team Championships. I mean, was this something that was like conscious? Were, were you thinking about like, uh, you know, partnering up? I mean, both of you guys, I mean, I know that you've done tags and other scenarios, but becoming this solid of a team. Yeah. No, I think really it's like, um, we were both on some really strong individual paths. Um, and then when I got sent out for uh, best of super juniors, it was kind of just like a whole a whole lot of things sort of just fell into place in a, in a really strange way. There wasn't really uh, a whole lot of, you know, planning and plotting behind the scenes about me joining Bullet Club. It was almost an opportunity thing, you know, like Jay White was aware of my presence from his time in Impact with Chris. And then when I was out there for Super Juniors and we kind of crossed paths, yeah, it was just like a really opportunity, opportunistic sort of thing. So when uh, when that happened for me and I came home, it was almost an it was, it was like no prior conversation. It was almost just like we looked at each other and we were like, it's us now. It, as far as impact representation goes, like it's us. Yeah. So. yeah. It's, the Good Brothers were still the uh, impact world tag team champions at the time. So. You know, there was no there was no need to seek out these championships at the moment. But as soon as they lost the championships and, and Bullet Club needed to regain the titles, you know, and they went over to do what they, they're doing currently in WWE, me and Ace both knew, you know, it was only a matter of time before uh, we had these championships. We knew that if anybody was going to be a dominant tag team, it'd be the two most dominant people in the X division on our roster who were separate at the time. We knew that, you know, joining together – the tag team division was just going to have a hole that we were going to fill and we were going to punch our way straight to the top. How, how much say do you guys have now? You, you are in impact. You are under a new Japan pro wrestling uh, stable. Do you, do you guys have much say in, in what direction you want the bullet club in impact to go? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we have a lot of say in uh, in everything we do. You know, we weren't uh, we weren't brought into Bullet Club to be just like banner guys. You know, like we weren't we weren't. It's not like uh, yeah, it's it, we were brought in because of the direction that him and I are headed in, in the industry. So we kind of we we still get to do that. We still get to to aspire to our goals. You know, yeah. I think we also have a um, a good hand on what's um, 
what's hot right now because we're both young, you know, like wow. we were the youngest members in Bullet Club, I believe as well. And, uh, you know, because of that, we know not only just what's hot because we are wrestling currently, but because we are this new wave and this new generation of wrestlers that are taking over the game. So like, uh, you know, the companies trust us also in that sense to direct them into what will be popping next. You know, I think we have a good hand on it. Well, you know, being in this stable that crosses so many promotions, I mean, you know, I can't recall of one that has done what the Bullet Club has done. Just being part of that history, do you feel like it elevates you as a talent, just being part of that, you know, band, so to speak? Yeah, it uh, it gives us an opportunity for to show the world on a bigger stage who we are because you know people still subscribe to Bullet Club who may have not may have heard of Ace Austin and Chris Bay and haven't you know given us the, the proper chance to watch us before or people who were watching us already who you know knew about Bullet Club and wasn't too interested in Bullet Club so it works both ways where we get new people who are longtime fans of the group who then want to support us and then we got our people who are already supporting us who you know maybe couldn't care about the group recently and now they they're reinvested in the group you know uh I think Bullet Club's the 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 best pro wrestling faction that ever existed, if you ask me. You know, we're running 10 years right now. We've done so much in the industry, and it's only still growing, you know. Uh, so I think that there's a lot of eyes on us, and uh, we're growing that that division up and that reassuring that Bullet Club isn't isn't going anywhere. It's here to stay. Yeah, no, it was pretty – it sorry. was pretty like – oh, no, it's okay. Yeah, it was, it was pretty uh, – definitely – you, you could feel the shift, you know, when, when you uh, when you're recruited into something like Bullet Club, you can sort of feel the shift in the eyes on you. You know, you're 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 representing something different now, something more than yourself. Uh, so, yeah, it all ties. Now, Chris, when the Bullet Club came in, uh, I think most of us fans at least thought, all right, they'll show up for a month, they'll do their thing, then they'll disappear, kind of the wrestling way of life. Now, it, it feels like they've been an impact now forever. Are you shocked at how long the presence for Bullet Club with the working relationship with Impact has, for, I guess for both of you guys, has has maintained itself within that company? Um, I'm not necessarily shocked because I know that, you know, Impact has been around for a long time, you know, uh, 20 plus years at this point. I know that they they plan to be around forever. So anything that we stick our hands in is going to have some longevity to it. And uh, for myself as well, you know, I didn't I didn't expect this to be a short term thing. I almost didn't think it was real when it was first happening. You know, I had asked Jay White a couple of times, like, you sure this is, you know, like, you know, everybody just jump me in a couple of <laughs> months when I turn my back. Right. Just kick me out. Right. That's not what we're doing here. Right. But like, you know, he assured me that that, you know, he had a vision and I had to trust in his vision and also trust in my abilities to execute and help execute this vision for the long term. Um but I didn't think that it was it was going to be short. I thought maybe my tenure would have been short, you know, but I knew that what he had planned was going to stretch for a long amount of time. And I'm glad that I'm still a part of that. I'm, I'm, I'm holding proof right next to me right now. You know, we 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 had the tag titles last year with the Good Brothers having them. And now we have the tag titles um, with me and Ace having them. Bullet Club is owning these championships we're going to own every championship in pro wrestling we represent every company in pro wrestling it's this is never going away this is something that's going to last forever in my opinion there's a strong correlation i think between like uh like like look at impact wrestling as a whole right the whole the whole idea is impact wrestling has always been hard to kill right it's yep. something that has existed through adversity uh against all odds no matter what and bullet yeah. club is the very same Bullet Club is is impossible to kill. It, it's something that has existed through so much, through adversity, through switches, through changes, uh, and despite and despite anything, it, it has existed and it has remained powerful uh, despite anything. So I I think uh, uh, the the brain of something like Bullet Club th that's the reason why the tenure wasn't short in Impact Wrestling because. Bullet Club, the the roots they have to go deep. They have they have to spread wide. So of course, it's a place where there's got to be roots. Well, there's a certain aesthetic uh, aesthetic, excuse me, 
with the Bullet Club. And, you know, members come and go, obviously. Um, my, I, I guess, like, when as these members did, uh, go to other companies, maybe not take part in, in Bullet Club stuff or whatever, who, how, how is it decided who fills that role, who makes the decisions? It's a great question. Um, I think it's whoever, whoever wants to step up, you know, uh, all of us are capable of steering the ship. You know, uh, some of us enjoy just being passengers and doing our part as passengers to protect the ship. Uh, and it's whoever just feels on that day particular, I feel like to step up. Ace, you want to, you want to tap in on this one? Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, Gato also is like, obviously a huge, uh, you know, he's like the four, he's like kind of the forefather figure, uh, For sure. almost, you know, within, within Bullet Club, uh, he's the blacksmith, right? You know what I'm saying? Like yep. him and Jay White's relationship was very clear, very strong. So, um, so yeah, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like, I don't want to say it's just like up to Gato, you know, it's cause it's not quite like that. But um, it's really uh, like like Gato's got that strong influence, so it's kind of yeah. I mean, whoever's got that, whoever's got that position, whoever steps up to that position, who's got a big appetite today, boys? <laughs> Ace, I want to say maybe I've been watching you for eight or nine years now. Uh, I don't remember the exact math. But you you've come up to a couple indie promotions here in Michigan. I saw you with you know when I was kind of following Petey Williams around, and in that time you you were still a young guy. You're still a young guy now, and you have so much already accomplished. You were in one the greatest stable in wrestling, Impact Tag Team Champions. Uh, you have held various belts all over. Are you still kind of young enough where? Maybe you you don't appreciate it as much as you would if you were 38 or 39 and you keep feeling like the accomplishments will keep coming and just keep bringing them on. Absolutely. No, 100 percent. You're you're on the money with that. I've said it before uh, during I'm a three time X Division champion, and that's still that's still not fully. Yeah, that that's something that I fully not that I don't appreciate it. It's just something that I don't know how to appreciate fully yet. Cause I, I haven't had such, you know, that long of a time, eight years actually is, is coming up. Uh, April 4th will be my eight year anniversary as a pro wrestler. So, um, those times you saw me in the Michigan area, that was probably right when I was really making my biggest impact in the industry and, and, and turning those eyeballs on me and getting the attention that I needed to get my contracts and, and get my name out there. Um, that's why I was spending time up there in the Michigan area. I was, I was, uh, Sammy Callahan was, was one of my mentors. So anytime he was driving to an impact show, I was in the car with him showing face and trying to make connections and get an opportunity. So yeah, that's, that, that's kind of how that all fell into place for me. When I look at you both and your success, I see it's because of the opportunities that you've had to go to other places, which, you know, the wrestling landscape now is completely different than let's say 15 years ago. I mean, you have a Japanese company on American TV. You have a lot more educated fans, you know, thanks to the tape traders. And I've got to give a nod to them, but do you think it's possible? Because I, I feel like a lot of wrestlers, especially the younger wrestlers and you guys and, and I would leave you out of the conversation, but do you feel like they get fast tracked to a position before that they're ready as opposed to what you guys have been doing is soiling your oats across many different companies, small Indies, J Japanese, you know, you, you learn to work these places. Do you feel, or have you seen, or do you have an opinion about the, the fast tracking of younger talent who might not who might not be ready for the that kind of exposure a and b situation that they get themselves into yeah um i i see that for sure and i think that that's how you really learn to sink or sink or swim you know uh you got to get thrown into that position in order to see who's ready to do it sometimes you don't have forever to wait for something to happen. So the quicker you get to it can be better. 
But the problem with that is that the more the 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 pace quickens for everybody, the more we have room for uh, bad quality to slip through as well. Which then, like you said, you know, uh, the tape traders and and our fans being smarter now, it can also uh, dilute what our fans are seeing and how they also receive the product now. And then sometimes their standard can lower. But that also works out in a lot of people's benefit because if you're really good or if you actually just have it, you know, uh, you'll stand out to them that much more and you'll be able to, uh, you know, stand apart from those who maybe had the same speed to get to where you're at but can't keep up and stay where you're at. And that's what determines different longevities in this business. I see it all the time. I feel like now with a lot of companies, with a lot of young people who get opportunities who haven't maybe been doing it forever. And um, they they just, there's a lot of things that they need to work on and more things than not. And uh, for that, you know, some people will just become accepting of it. Some fans are just like, this is what it is. And then other fans then have an issue with it and go, you know, this isn't, great quality what happened to the days of this i missed the days of that i missed the the things of that so uh it, it can be tough as a talent to navigate that and it can be tough as a viewer also to you know understand especially with everyone being so smart now understand that there's a lot of work to be done and are, are we going to keep leniency here or are we going to you know call it like it is yeah a lot of work to be done is a is a a perfect way to say it i think that that's like the big issue with the fast tracking is like the, I, I mean, I was trained by the wild Samoans initially. So I, I come from a really strong foundation of earning it. So I think there's a, I do personally think there is a lack of that. There is a severe lack of earning it in today's climate right now. There's a lot of opportunities being like presented and passed around to these fast tracked you know individuals who uh i mean not only do they <laughs> to to the point we were talking about before not only do they like not really know how to appreciate the opportunity that they have in front of them but they don't have the common sense yet like the wrestling common sense to really know how to handle what what, what they're in you, yeah. like what they're involved in and you can't blame them for it like you, you're not going to say no to an opportunity like that right. right like if i was in that position I wouldn't have said no, of course, but there should be some, I mean, there should definitely be some more, uh, more of a focused <laughs> intention with some of, some of that. Well, I we need I to just, get the, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, please. I was, I was, I was going to say, we need to get um our, uh, you know, the people who come before us on a better page to help out the younger people to make sure that they understand the importance of what's in front of them and also can carry on the traditions and the legacies of how, how to properly execute it, you know? Well, cause that I wanted to piggyback this question because it's very interesting what we're talking about right now, especially for me as a fan is because, you know, Ace Austin, Chris Bay get into the bullet club. You know, that they're not bullshit. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like there's this level that has been maintained here. So as soon as a guy gets like, and it's like, it's so rare now that just by you guys being in the bullet club, I know that you guys are worth a shit. Right. And I know that the way that Japanese wrestling works, there has to be a story told. There has to be psychology, right? There has to be certain elements, you know, you can get fast tracked. And, and if you got all the charisma and know how to work, God bless you. Right. Like we, I'm sure we would all agree on that. Sure. I guess my uh, what I wanted to ask to follow it up is, you know, when you get into the ring, maybe with somebody who's a lot greener and just knows the spot fests or all these things and doesn't know how to tell the story, do you take that opportunity? Because Ace, tell me, how many matches have you had? Uh, oh, I, 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 let's see. As of this past weekend, I'll tell you the exact number. It's right here. Hold on. Give them the number, baby. <laughs> We're talking about 836 matches. Right. And you also remember every one of them, don't you? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't. I'm telling you, sometimes I'll read, I'll read a, I'll read a, 
aligned and i'm like i, I could could not re remember a thing about working with that person at all well well we had we've we've you know the three of us have had the opportunity minus dan dennis i'm sorry dennis to take okay. this over but we've been talking about you know you were knocked you knocked yourself out one time in a match but you got through it right because you instinctively knew what to do right some guys might not be able to do that you know yeah. my, that was my whole point here it's like when you and so let me ask the question again when you get into somebody or get into a situation with guys who are maybe greener do you take that time and let them know hey we're going to slow it down or we're going to do this we're going to do that it's not just going to be this it's got to mean something yeah i think uh uh a really great thing that we get to do as part of the impact wrestling roster is we get to independently continue to pursue whatever we want so we get to take independent bookings and work with talent that is, you know, as you said, a lot greener or, or you know, just maybe not as exposed or just whatever, newer, whatever you want to call it. We get to work with a lot of people. And, and for them, it's a it's a it's an incredible opportunity to be able to uh, to learn. And, and we have to be willing to do that. Um, and, and I mean, I know that both of us. Uh, I mean, uh, I, he'll have more to say, I'm sure, but I know that both of us are similar in the way that we want to kind of impart our style. We, we try not to be like, uh, okay, we're going to teach you a lesson today. You know what I'm saying? It's not like that. We uh, we just want people to, we, we want to work well with people so that they learn what it's like to work with people on the next level. Because I mean, that's how you learn. That's that, That's yeah. how I came up was working with people better than you elevates you. You learn how to work the way that they work and then you start to find your own flavor your own style so it's like yeah that's we, we get to do that yeah like like you said um it's it's important for me as a talent to give people the game that we're getting because we're getting it right now you know in real time it's not knowledge that we learned 10 years ago it's not not knowledge that we learned five years ago it's the collection of knowledge that we learned throughout the duration of our careers but it's also the freshest knowledge of what's going on right now in the scene you know and um the best way for people to learn is to actually get in there and feel it so you can understand what it is you know we have a uh, a school here locally that I train at and sometimes I do some uh some teaching at this is where I came up at future stars of wrestling and uh you know I came up under D'Lo and and Kenny King and Sen Bodhi and uh you know the list goes on but you know we have a, a young guy there 15 years young and uh I just wrestled him last month on the show and you know he's amazing he's, he's going to be you know a big star in this business you know when he comes of age and grows into his body and all that good stuff. And I've watched this kid since he was really young trained, but it was very important to me that I got in the ring with him, you know, on a live show and had a, a match in front of a live crowd with him last month, because I know that there's stuff that uh, he needs to learn that I can teach him by being in the ring with him. Like you said, you know, like this is where we go slow. This is where we create a moment right here. You don't have to destroy your body every single night out there you don't have to just go out there and have a spot fest in order to uh make people believe in and what we're doing or make people interested in what we're doing or keep people coming back and i think through the course of the match that we had you know he learned a lot that he can now take and hopefully do what i do which is you know give it on to the next person and he can now do that even in his position from the one opportunity he got from being in the ring with myself so like it's very important that we get to pass that knowledge on yeah, the, the younger, less experienced people, like you got to think they usually look to us um, when we're when we're in that situation. They usually look to yeah. us for that knowledge. So, yeah. you know, so, yeah, to, to answer your question, we, we do. We do get to to, to say and, and, and do those things with the younger, less experienced talent that we that we get to work with. You look at other successful stables and just one off the top of my head evolution they bring oh. in a young randy orton and a young batista oh. and all of a sudden these guys become superstars and it's happened all over uh, bullet club brings you guys in for a reason we all know why now the doors open to this wealth of knowledge that you guys may not have been able to get anywhere else yeah. uh, what it so far has been some of the best advice or some of the the lessons you may have learned just by being part of the bullet club in that access honestly the two things that i can think about off the top of my head that has gone the furthest with me 
especially being around, you know, Gallows and Anderson and then um, being ringside and uh, on the apron and a part of like Jay White matches is, you know, take it all in for sure, uh, you know, and letting those moments, you know, fester, but also, you know, uh, crowd control. Those guys have really great crowd control and that's, that's our business. You know, it's entertainment at the end of the day, it's selling tickets, it's entertaining people. So if you can master the art of crowd control, the rest is almost cake, you know, like, of course it's going to be hard work, but that's what we train for. That's what we put in all the hours for. That's why we've wrestled the number of matches that we wrestled. That's why we stay consistent wrestling independently and on impact wrestling every week, you know, access TV. It's, it's, it's all there for the reps, but like that crowd control is unbeatable, you know, and being in the bullet club, having the fans that bullet club has globally, you know, you, you, you say too sweet and everybody's going crazy. Okay. So where, where do I put this in my repertoire in order to, you know, blend this with me, but also get some crowd control here. Like honestly, just that crowd control and, and taking it all in and making everything feel larger than life. Even if it's the simplest thing is what I've really taken from it. Yeah, what a great way to put it. Yeah, no, uh, as far as in-ring goes, that's a that's a really great uh, way to put it. Yeah, that's that's 100% what it's like um, outside of the ring. Uh, I would say that one of the biggest takeaways for me is just the uh, – is how to handle yourself uh, globally, how to handle yourself on a, on a level above – one company one place one uh you know one one state like uh the being a part of something like bullet club is like uh it, it's more than uh it's more than a single mentor it's a whole it's literally a club of people and unless you cross like un unless you get on on the inside there are international secrets li literally international secrets that you yeah. don't get to learn without getting into a position like uh like chris and i are in um and uh those those japan tours that i've done are have been just life-changing in that way it's like it's just a, a way to ha how to handle yourself as a superstar in, in a in a in a in a global way i mean it just yeah it, it's it's a it's a total elevation i remember we do we did that finals in uh you know the uh tag league and I remember sitting on the top rope during the entrance and just looking out into the sea of people for like three minutes, just standing on the top rope and then just coming over to me like, bro, look, look at all this shit. Like I was just, <laughs> like, seldomly do I ever actually just like out there in the moment, take in the moment, you know, like, but I remember walking over to you and being like, bro, look at all this shit. Like you see all these people up here. Like, yeah. this shit is like, we're, we're in you know, it right now. Like, and, you know? and what's, what's funny about that is you and I had that moment there at the finals for, for junior tag league. I had another moment similar to that uh, at the end of my first tour uh, after I joined Bullet Club and then Jay White wins the IWGP world title and Bullet Club hits the ring with the beers and we're yeah. celebrating and there's confetti and there's thousands of people and uh, and uh, LG looks at me and he goes, it's damn cool, isn't it? Like, you know, we had, the, it was one of those things where he just kind of gave me that like, hey, make sure you make sure you you soak this yeah you know because yeah. you're but yeah this is something so yeah it was really a good way to like snap me back in but hey you're a part of this you're, you're you're really a part of this yeah do you find that um i mean that's that's super awesome and, and you know i was thinking one of the questions because it's very rare that we i mean we've had tag teams together on this show before but you know I don't think it's been that many times, maybe twice, Dennis, maybe if that, you know, cause we've had gallows and, 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 uh, Anderson, Anderson a times. had FTR now with you guys. Yep. Um, what is it? I mean, do you guys prefer one or the other as far as singles or the tag team, or is it just kind of like, what is the now that's kind of what I want to do? Um, you know, where are you at with that? Because I'm a tag team guy. I love the tag teams. I always have. Where are you guys at with it? If you have the right partner, tag team <laughs> wrestling is sweet. You know, uh, I'm I'm more on that 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 second part that you said, where it's like, what's the right now? You know, like growing up, I also really love tag teams, and a lot of my favorite wrestlers 
were very successful singles wrestlers who also had great tag team runs, you know, like even, even an impact, you know, uh, you know, Chris Saban and Alex Shelley being the Motor City Machine Guns before they were Motor City Machine Guns. I love Chris Saban, you know, as a singles wrestler, I loved Chris oh, yeah. Saban, you know, uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed his work, you know, and he voted over, even over at WWE, you know, like guys like Randy Orton and Edge, Edge coming from Edge and Christian, you know, Randy Orton coming from Evolution, like you mentioned, but then Rated RKO coming together, you know, like this stuff is sick. You know, if you have the right partner, things can, things can be awesome. And through Bullet Club, I've had a lot of great partners, you know, teaming with LP, he's a rock star, you know, teaming with Jay White and now being teamed with Ace Austin. I knew it as soon as he joined Impact or, uh, so, sorry, as soon as he joined Bullet Club and, um, you know, the tag team division was getting thin. I was like, man, you know, you put us two together, we're going to run it. You know, like I've always been a fan of his work from the outside and even sharing the ring with him as an opponent. So like, you know, put us on the same team. This can be awesome. This is going to translate great. And a lot of fans put it into perfect words where they all share the same sentiment of this is the team we never knew we needed, mm -hmm. but we're so glad that we got. And I feel the same way, you know, as him being my partner. I love tag team wrestling. If Ace is my tag team partner, <laughs> you know, like shout out Chase Owens too. You know, we teamed a couple months ago for the first time. And, you know, it was cool, whatever, but like, <laughs> Ace Austin's my tag team partner, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I cut a promo about it after the match. Like, yeah, that was cool, but like, wait till I bring my real tag team partner. Yeah, and know? and 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 yeah. Chase's partner is Fale usually, so I'm sure exactly, for him it was yeah. like, you know, it's an experience trying to trying to mix up something you're used to, you know. And I I think to kind of wrap this question into something we talked about before about uh you know Chris and I coming together. It's like we both um. We're, we're both very conscientious of what we're capable of individually. And we're not looking at this tag team thing as an opportunity to uh, like almost lessen, you know what I mean? We're, we're not looking to kind of combine forces so that individually we have to work less hard. If that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's completely the opposite. It was him and I were such great, adversaries on opposite ends of the spec on opposite ends in, in uh, the X division that we had this incredible respect for each other's style and each other's game that when the opportunity to come to put that together came along, it was almost like, Oh, well, I mean, yeah, of course, like, like it, it, there was, there was no, there was no like, Oh, well, this is going to get in the way of my individual goals. I don't know if I want to do this. There, there was never any moment like that. We know that our individual goals are still within reach and they always will be as long as we uh, keep our mind on them. But part of our individual goals is that triple crown, grand slam. We, you know, we, we want to be a part, a huge part of the history. And the only way to do that is to find somebody that you can at some point rely on and team with. Um, and so this is, so, 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 as you were saying, this is the now for us. We we love singles competition. We love being in the spotlight. But the now for us right now is this spotlight is the tag team the, that we were the tag team uh, environment that we were able to uh, to conquer. Um, yeah. so, so many great tag teams right now too. Like, yeah, we'd be doing ourselves a disservice if we didn't get a chance to get in the ring with all these great tag teams. If we were just solo wrestlers, you know, like, yeah, we can still do that independently. Individually, we're still getting all of the experience and uh, and achievements, accolades. We're we're achieving everything individually still together, if that makes yeah. sense. Did you see FTR tweet a picture of these belts not long ago? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting to say the least. Oh boy, that's gonna get headlines. Dirt sheets, get your uh, fatty little <laughs> fingers typing, baby, because we got dirt there. Uh, I I gotta ask you, Chris, how long before Ace got inducted into the Bullet Club did you know that that was an option? Did you have to keep it secret? Because I, I I have a feeling they probably came to you and said, "Hey, what do you think about this guy? Should we bring yeah. him in?" What was that process like? Of you know basically knowing or being asked about him. Yeah. Um, I, I may or may not have knew before him, you know, <laughs> I, I may or may not have knew before him because we have to have these bullet club powwows, you know, and uh, you know, uh, when they, when they presented the idea, 
yeah, what do you what do you think about Ace? What do you think about Ace? What do you think about Ace? I thought it's a great addition, you know. Um, I ain't I ain't a stingy person, so like him coming in the bull club for me wasn't like, no, he's gonna steal my spot, you know. I'm the young guy. I was like, sweet, do it. He's he's a great talent, and like we're gonna make a lot of money together, you know. We're gonna make a lot of money together. We're gonna make a lot of moments together. So I knew I probably knew uh you know a little bit before he was brought into the group. And uh, I'm glad that they asked my opinion on it because <laughs> my opinion has not only not changed, but it's also gone so far as to bring us world tag team championships because of my lack of selfishness and my interest in wanting to have him a part of the group. I love Ace and I've always, I always had before Bullet Club, you know, before I even was signed to Impact he was someone that was inspiring me, you know, like he was the young guy that they signed and you could tell that they had hopes for, and uh, he was going to be the prospect. And I was chasing the contract at the time. And I was like, man, this guy is doing exactly what I want to do. Like I need to, I need to keep up and or work harder than this guy. You know, like it wasn't ever like a, Oh, he's got my spot. It's like, nah, he's doing what I want to do, but I knew that we could both do it. You know, like I knew that, if I take my journey and he continues his journey, we'll meet somewhere along the journey. So like when they say, yeah, what about Ace? I'm like, yes, let's do it. That's a great addition to the group. There's nobody like him. You know, uh, sometimes in, in groups, you get two people who are too similar, you know, and mm -hmm. as much as you could just say, oh, Ace and Bay are high flyers. Ace and Bay are X division guys. We're two different types of guys, you know? So like it's it works out perfectly fine and it gives – our fans at Impact Wrestling, something to see that they can claim as their own. Man, it's crazy. We just, uh, uh, Chris and I just in Vegas the other weekend, we just went back and watched uh, an explosion match, uh, me versus him in, uh, when was it? September 2019, right? 19, yeah. Something like that. Uh, yep. Yeah, it was, it oh. was. Yeah, Sorry. it was an explosion. It was the, the, the only time the impact has Remember gone that. to California uh, since I've been with them for tapings. Uh, and we had this explosion match. And 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 just like you said, with that 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 selflessness, I didn't see that as an opportunity to uh, like squash out uh, a talent that was looking for an opportunity. I saw that as an opportunity to like mix it up with with a, a promising talent that was on the way up. And uh, and that's 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 what we treated the match like. I treated you with respect, and you treated me with respect, and we had a really awesome match. Watching it back, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and and that and that carried through for years. And that that game, bro. That game that you were getting for the the six or seven months you were already with the company and all the ex experience you had at the time. That game you were getting, you passed along in that match. You know, working with me whether you know it or not. And, you know, you did your job the same way we were talking about earlier, doing our job for the younger guys. I was the younger guy in that scenario, even though I'm a year older than you. <laughs> I was the younger guy in that yeah. scenario that you were giving the game to throughout the course of that match, man. Hell yeah. Lars, do you have any more questions? I, you know, I, I think we've had a pretty extensive rad interview. I, I will yeah. say this. The one thing the Bullet Club doesn't have that I think Lars and I can fill is they don't have podcasters. <laughs> so I'm just pitching this right now. Maybe you can take this up to the Bullet Club ladder. Bullet Club podcasters. Think about it. I'm not saying I need an answer right now. I'm just saying Lars and I can throw up the two sweet every podcast and represent. That's it. We could be podcast club. Oh. Ooh. Do that. Yeah. Just hey, sounds out. like money to me. <laughs> sounds like hey, money. There's <laughs> always money when you at when you put the club and when you involve the club. There's always money involved. Just just we'll talk to them. our people. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little just, inevitable finessing. A little bit of that. I, I like where your head is. Hey, listen, Impact Wrestling, check your local listings. Go over to their YouTube page. Subscribe over there because they've got some great stuff from the past, from current stuff. Bullet Club, go just Google Bullet Club and find it. If you are lived under a rock and you don't know anything about the Bullet Club, if you're like one of those NWO guys and you're like, who's this Bullet Club? Just Google them. Go over there. Ace, Chris, where can they find you guys? Uh, Ace, please. Sure, sure. Uh, also, uh, before I get to we get to our individual stuff, I do want to mention Impact Plus does have all of my best of Super Junior run and our uh, Super Junior Tag League run all on Impact Plus. It's all available on Impact Plus. So if you don't have New Japan World and you don't want to look through the individual shows, 
they have just our stuff specifically up on the Impact Plus app. So definitely check that out. I consider Best of Super Junior some of my absolute best singles work of all time. And uh, Super Junior Tag League was an unbelievable opportunity for us to literally learn day by day in like the land of the best wrestling in the world, uh, how to be a great tag team. So I think that's a really cool thing to watch. Uh, yeah, so all that's up on Impact Plus. Uh, me personally, I am at the underscore ace underscore Austin on both uh, Twitter and Instagram. Um, I do have a YouTube channel, Ace Austin. Uh, it's, I'm not very active on it, but I'm hoping to be more active on it at some point. So you can check that out, I suppose. Cameo, I have that. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it for me. Yeah, and for myself, you know, Ace already mentioned Impact Plus. And you can get the Ultimate Insiders, you know, on YouTube for 99 cents a month. You can get the commercial-free episodes of Impact Wrestling every Thursday if you don't have access TV. You know, you can you can do that. But if you want to just find me at Dash and Chris Bay, that's B-E-Y, not B-A-E, for the single ladies who are going to be watching this, you know. Dash and Chris Bay, <laughs> shout out the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. You know, too sweet to him for the dashing. Shout out Cody Rhodes. Dash and Chris Bay on Instagram, Twitter. On YouTube, I'm Chris Bay on there. You can find vlogs all the way up from when I was 12 years old to 14 years young. Itty Bitty Bay unboxing TNA replica belts on there. And now modern day videos of me reviewing real ring used impact championships. You can find my music on every streaming platform where you find music, Spotify, Apple, Deezer, Pandora, YouTube, SoundCloud, wherever you're at, Chris Bay on there as well. Listen to my music, listen to the albums that are out, watch my music videos. And uh, I'm not on Cameo. They have finessed me out of a deal. I'm not on <laughs> Cameo, but it's all good. It's all love. You can find me on social media. I usually respond on there. Dash and Chris Bay. Check well, out the Chris Bay music, seriously. Um, um, yeah. It gets me hype. It gets me hype like nothing else. I'm telling you, I've said it to him out there. We're walking out and sometimes I'm just like, oh, feel it. I feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lars, you say you have? I have. You know, and no that's way. the one. Yeah, of course I have. But, you know, when I'm a fan of somebody, I go in. You know what I mean? I want to know things, you know? And that's so, and that was one of the things that I regret not bringing up. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Well, no, we'll go to commercial good. break. I, I appreciate it. And we'll go to commercial break. We'll do the final two hours of this interview in about <laughs> three minutes. But listen, for everybody at home, the show is over. Wrestling Perspective Podcast. Make sure you go watch it. Fightful. Thank you so much for hosting our videos there. But make sure you go follow everything Wrestling Perspective. What is it? Dashing Wrestling Perspective now? Ooh. Yeah, let's see. Mm-hmm. You you didn't quite jump at the the. I, I believe it's invite. called. I believe it's called Podcast Club at the Wrestling Perspective slash. Let's wrap it up. Get, yeah. get it <laughs> uh guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah.